little boy who never stood a chance after the authorities missed countless opportunities to save Arthur Labinjo Hughes. Just two months before his death, social services concluded there were no safeguarding concerns. Joining us now is the director of the Association of Child Protection Professionals, Wendy Thorogood. Wendy, good morning. Good I morning. Mean, there are a lot of lessons to be learnt here, Wendy. But I suppose if, if I start with the bigger question, can we ever really stop this happening again? Is that at all possible? I think we have to believe that we can make a difference. Um, but we do have to remember that sort of up to 70 children, perhaps more, die each year and where we're learning lessons. And this is something that's gone on for many years. And it's, it's um, something that we do need and are continually addressing. Wendy, well, I, I want to ask you, because there were opportunities to save Arthur. And it, it would not be true to say that his cries went unheeded because they, his, par his grandparents raised concerns, his uncle raised concerns, and social services did visit. What is the procedure if I'm a grandparent and I'm concerned during lockdown, something's happening to my grandson, and I call social services, what was the procedure for a social worker to visit? Were they allowed in the house? Were they allowed to talk to the little boy on his own? What do you do when a parent is absolutely determined to stop you seeing what's actually happening? As professionals, they should be trained to be able to identify where there's manipulation. Just one thing I want to pick up on this bruising, um, because <clears throat> clearly it was shared with social services, that the photo was shared with police, um, and I'm not criticising her actions at all, but... I would have liked if she actually had that child in front of her to actually seek medical intervention as well. Because at that moment in time, you can take the photo, you can use that for evidence, but health are part of the system as well. And that could have triggered a multi-agency assessment quicker. When you say she, perhaps... are you talking about the social worker? The grandmother. The grandmother. If, if that photo, if she's taking the photo, and I don't want to, because she will be struggling and suffering enough, but my plea for anyone out there that's concerned about a child where there's visible bruises, seek medical intervention, and that will trigger an assessment. I'm and so, if you're concerned... I, OK, I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but she thought she was doing the right... She, she, was, I know, she went to I know. social services. Are you saying that social services couldn't intervene does, and therefore does, it was down to the grandmother to seek further help? Does, does going to social services not trigger a multi-agency intervention? You have to go to a, a, a doctor. I don't understand. It would trigger a, a, an intervention. You can put it into the multi-agency sharing hub. It will be looked at. It triggered the actual point of um, a social worker going out, but it's the matter of delay and the severity of when that was seen. And I wouldn't disparage anyone doing a referral but what I'm saying is if you have a child that you're concerned is actually being harmed medical professionals can support you as well to speed up the process so, and to actually see that moment in time of those injuries. So try, trying to understand what you're saying for a moment are, are you trying to say you should go to a medical professional first because they have more resources to see it more quickly whereas you go to social services there's a slower response time. Is, is that the difference between those two access points? I, I think under COVID, I would have... If, if under normal circumstances, that would have come into the multi-agency hub and you would have had health look at that referral as well. And I'm not clear of how, obviously, Birmingham multi-agency hub was working, but any child where you see an unusual injury, there should be medical intervention. And the police can support you on that. If I was training GPs... I would say if they had a child that they were concerned about, I would want a proper medical. And that is an unusual injury that a child wouldn't really necessarily get through playing. But anyhow, we need to actually look at it in more depth. I don't understand moment. why the grandmother had... Why you're suggesting the grandmother mm. should have done more when the social, social services, whose job, professional responsibility it is to protect a child, they went to visit... And they said they had no safeguarding concerns. Yeah, because, they, because of how the situation was set up for when the social worker came. And we know that families that are um, abusing children will 
um, set the scene in a way that you don't always obviously see what's going on. But isn't it's really the responsibility complex. then, but isn't the responsibility, Wendy, then with the social worker to say there is bruising and immediately inform the, the and health that's what it says in the policy that's what it says unusual bruising we would like a medical intervention and that was the gap here but what i'm saying is and i as i say i, I want to really stress that i am not saying the grandmother could have done any more but i'm just saying for future if anyone sees any unusual bruising seek medical intervention as well as sharing that with social care because that would trigger the process so, so that, well... I, I said, I'm sorry, I'm just stunned. <laughs> because mm. I would have thought, once you phone social services, they're the ones who trigger the process. They're the ones with the responsibility. They're the ones with the legal powers. They're the ones who are supposed to be part of a multi-agency approach. And if you're told, as the grandmother, actually, it's down to you, it's down to the family to, to, to call the, the doctors... I'm saying that at that moment in time, that child could have been seen medically, that she's got the, the actual injury on the child, any child, anybody that sees an injury on a child, as well as jointly phoning social services. My, my words are being sort of slightly twisted. I'm just saying that that would have prevented a delay. So I, I think I'll, I'll try and pick up. What you're saying is you're not talking rights or wrongs here. You're saying as a practical no. answer to the question, as yeah. if this, if you were worried that this were to happen again, regardless yes. of, I mean, even though it sounds like a load of whatever that you should have to do it this way, f let's forget that. Let's talk practicals. If you want to get it done quickly, seek medical intervention as well as social services. You're right, it shouldn't work that way. But if that's what it does, approach. and that's what we we're doing to tell the nation approach. what they should do, then yeah. that's the message. Call both. Yeah. Don't leave it to chance. Because yeah, that's it. Do it. Do it in partnership. Definitely phone social care, but equally seek medical help because that assessment would have triggered not only the physical look at the bruises, but he was being starved and tortured and he would have had a safe place to actually talk as well. And again, it has to be done in partnership. And of course, the right way is to go through social care, but it's not always the quickest way. And we are merging as a partnership where we equally have equal partnership response. And I equally can't understand when the police received the photo that there wasn't that joint conversation in that social care when they're going around and doing the visit should have looked closer. And, I, and I'm aware that he probably wasn't spoken to on his own and it was a staged situation that the social worker saw. And we have to continually improve the training and recognition of signs of abuse for all social workers, particularly when they're under pressure. I mean, Boris Johnson has said he's going to leave no turn on stone, a, a turn, you know, no stone unturned in relation to what happened. We need to look at, I mean, we heard from a bit earlier about how child services are very stretched and the effort that's been putting into early help. But we equally need to support the professionals continually, training, development, supervision, to make sure that they are reminded of these risks. Because we don't know what that person's day was like and what she was witnessing. She might have come yeah. from an equally horrific case and Wendy. that might have seemed less important, but it's not, I know. Wendy, Wendy Thoriger, Director of the Association of Child Protection Professionals, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Solihull's Local Child Safeguarding Partnership is now carrying out an independent review into the terrible tragedy of Arthur's death, including contact with social services. The Independent Office of Police Conduct is set to publish a report into West Midland Police contact with the case in due course, but has found no indication any individual behaved in a manner that justified disciplinary proceedings. Just, you know, just to remember, we were in a national lockdown and everybody was told stay at home to protect the NHS. It's Calling cool. a doctor I, 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 it, it, it was hard for anybody, but the idea, I mean, that grandmother was doing what she thought she was supposed to be doing. And, and what any of us would have done in the same position.